Welcome back drinks fans, I am Steve the Barman. In today's video, I'm hopefully gonna help you understand my favorite spirit category a little bit more. Uh, I'm gonna be talking about brandy. Uh, I don't often do these type of videos, but this is something happened. I'm gonna explain it all in this video. This one's gonna be a little bit of waffle, but loads of, loads of information, loads of knowledge for you. Um, essentially going to make up a four part mini series um, that I'm I'm doing so the first one I'm going to be talking to you about brandy why I what I'm doing this mini series uh, and kind of help you understand it a bit more in the second video I'm going to do I'm going to be showing you the out and out brandy classic cocktails say I don't never ever do these type of videos so I'm going to be showing you the classic brandy cocktails and in the third video I'm going to show you how to take brandy and flip it into some of your favorite for it well and known cocktails and actually for me how it how it actually makes it taste better uh, and then in the fourth video uh, that's when I'm going to come alive and I'm going to give you my kind of inspiration my kind of flips to help you um, find and discover and explore brandies that little bit more because as I say it is my favorite category. So let's talk about why I'm doing this mini series. Now I will, as always with my videos, there will be chapters. If you wanna skip this bit and find out what exactly brandy is, just have a look at scrub through. You'll see the chapters easily, but I just kind of wanna give you the backstory. Um, I got into brandy and rum was the first spirit that I kind of had, obviously. Captain, I've talked about it before. Captain Morgan's was my first spirit. 18 years old is what I lived on. Captain Morgan's and Coke, loved it. Uh, and then I was fortunate enough in my, second year of bartending uh, to go on a, a Hennessy uh, cognac tasting uh, and they gave us uh, the, the Hennessy VS, they gave us the uh, Finder Cognac uh, which is their VSOP, then they gave us the Hennessy XO and then they went through that and I was just completely blown away by these flavours and taste. It was nothing like I'd ever experienced before in, well, only in two years of drinking really and making drinks and absolutely loving. I've just been captured by brandy ever since. However, for me, the category is very, very stagnant. Nothing's happening with it. Everything's kind of seen as pretentious, you know. It's even for me, uh, and you've heard me probably mention it on this channel before. I, when I'm drinking uh, cognacs, uh, when I'm drinking brandy, sorry, I'll, I'll kind of, if you're thinking why I'm saying cognac and brandy, I'll explain exactly uh, coming up in a bit. But I, you know, my only, my own personal taste palette goes doesn't go any lower than a VSOP normally. Uh, so even I'm to a certain extent a little bit pretentious about what I like. Um, but as I say, the category is sh shrouded in this air of kind of, you know, you have it in a brandy sniff, there, there's no ice, you warm it up in the palm of your hand, and that's how you enjoy brandy. And nothing has ever really come along uh, to take it, to bring it forward, like the rum category, we've got the cocktails, the fun cocktails, you know, gin have gone with all their flavored gins, vodkas are now coming through, back through with all the flavored vodkas. Nothing's really, whiskey, you know, whiskies we've got loads of flavors whiskies now and the uk is starting to make whiskey so but as i say nothing has really captured me uh, to kind of get all excited about brandy until a couple of weeks ago uh, and this product is responsible for it and i'm going to use this in the four uh, videos that I've, I've got coming up here uh, the, this whole came about to me i was flicking through instagram uh one night and i saw i don't forget, I forget what night of the week it was now but uh, emily atak uh, she's an English, young English kind of comedian, um, celebrity kind of thing. She, she's absolutely hilarious. Uh, and she was just basically, she put up a, one of her Instagram stories. She was just sitting there after a hard day's work uh, with a bottle of this on a little side table, just enjoying a glass of it. And I kind of saw uh, the, I kind of saw that and thought, oh, what's, you know, what's that in there? So I kind of, she'd obviously tagged them in it. They're friends of hers uh, as well. She tagged them into the story. I kind of went there. And then once I landed on their Instagram account, that's when I became excited um, and went on this whole thing. Finally, someone is doing something with the brandy uh, category. And I have to keep saying brandy category because I, throughout my whole career, I've said cognac uh, because I'm a cognac lover. Um, but I will explain more. We'll cut back to this and I will explain more. Uh, why this has captured me because before then I have to give you the kind of backstory of what is brandy and that before you can understand why this has got me super excited. So then let's uh, let's kind of dive into 
what is brandy? Brandy is essentially, in, in layman's terms, I'm not going to get all pretentious, I'm not going to come up with big words here for you. Uh, to bring it down into bare, bare basics, brandy is essentially a distilled wine. Okay, it's distilled from grapes. Much like whiskey is distilled from grain and things like that, and uh, wheat and vodka is obviously grain, wheat potatoes, and gin is obviously uh, distilled from vodka, and then botanicals are added to it, and then rum is obviously distilled from sugarcane or molasses. Brandy is distilled from grapes. It is essentially a very alcoholic wine. Now, it's not really to be confused with uh, other brandies that you get out there as well, and I've got a couple here if I can find them. Uh, the it's not, that's not what I was looking for, but there we go. We've obviously got products like that. I was looking for bowls. There it is. Um, bowls, apricot brandies. Of course, we've got um, brandy in that sense, which people actually kind of think are the same things, and they are to a certain extent. We've got fruit brandy, so distilled from apples, you get Calvados, so it's an apple brandy. From pears, Poir William, so you've got a pear brandy. Um, you've got peach, you've got cherry, you've got apricot brandies, all those kinds of things. So brandy essentially is anything distilled from fruit. However, uh, traditionally, the fruit brandies are a little bit more sugar, they've got more sugar added to them, or I should say sugar added to them, to turn them into eau de vies or fruit brandies. They are completely different to a proper brandy, a cognac, an armagnac, whatever you want to get into, because that is just 100% purely distilled grapes. So how do we uh, make brandy? Well, brandy is essentially four uh, very, very easy steps, all right? It's, it's nothing complicated about it at all. It's quite obvious when you think about it. First off, we take those grapes and we ferment them. We turn them into wine. Think of it like cider, like apples for cider. You kind of, uh, to turn cider in, I know in the US you call it hard cider, but now I'm talking English now, proper alcoholic apple cider. You kind of uh, distill, ferment that, uh, ferment those apples, uh, get all the sugars and all that. Is it fructose or something like that coming out? Uh, and that's what turns it into alcohol. So essentially we're turning the grapes into wine. From there, so that's stage one. For stage two, we then take that wine and we then distill it. Uh, so much like you've got the sugar cane for rum, you've got the, um, the sort of potatoes and the mash and all that, and the grain for, for vodka and all that, we're doing exactly the same thing. We're distilling it to get that very uh, high level of alcohol. Once that's stage two, once we've got that, we then add it to uh, barrels or pour into barrels or whatever to, to let it age. Now, I'll come on to the age classifications of brandies in a second. Um, again, that'll be in chapter, so you can scrub through straight to that bit if you want to see that. But again, so we let the whole brandies age. Uh, and then from there, anything uh, from six months, three years, whatever. I'll talk about that in a bit. But then once we've got that age, becomes the bottling, the blending and the bottling aspect of it. So as I go, quick recap cap we we ferment the fruit ferment the grapes we turn it into wine we distill that wine into a high alcohol we take that wine we then age it in barrels and then once that's aged we then blend it and bottle it um, and until we get the final uh, the final brandy now the main reason I kind of I think I like it more than rum more way more than whiskey and uh, more than vodka is because uh, by nature I've got a fruity palate anyway uh, by nature, I, I kind of love my fruit stuff, and I have got a, a, an ever so slightly sweeter palate as well. I wouldn't say overly sweet, but I have got a sweet tooth. Now, uh, brandy for me is a lot sweeter than uh, your rums, your vodkas, and that. Now, that's not to confuse it with the sweetness of a liqueur, uh, anything like that. We are not by any stretch of the imagination, talking about anything as sweet as that. We are even not talking about anything as sweet as a spiced rum, okay? Think it is uh, pure alcohol. Again, it's just got that little bit of fruity sweetness to it, uh, which kind of sits well with my uh, with my palate. So that's kind of why I love brandy uh, more than any other spirit category. So I've kind of talked a little bit about how brandy is made. Now, this is where I, I have to keep uh, slips of the tongue because now I'm gonna kind of get through to the whole classifications of it. There is a difference between brandy and cognac. There is a difference between brandy and armagnac. So I'm gonna kind of explain those very, very quickly and easily, hopefully for you. Uh, so take brandy, so that is brandy. To become a cognac, 
it's uh, has it's obviously French uh, and from the region of Cognac, which is kind of on the west uh, coast of France, kind of uh, just north of Bordeaux. That's the region of Cognac. And if I've got my memory, if my memory serves me correctly, uh, it has to be distilled. 90% uh, of that base liquid has to be distilled from Colombard, uh, Uni Blanc uh, grapes, or is it Folie, Folie Blanche? Uh, grapes so 90% of their brandy has to be distilled from those grapes and then 10% of it can be made up from uh, a kind of a narrow list of other grape varieties so you can't in, in effect you cannot make a cognac if you're in Spain you cannot make a cognac if you're in the north of France you cannot make cognac in Paris cognac can only be from the cognac region in France so let's take that up another level uh, and it pr probably is another level you know people do get pretentious say cognac's the best but for me uh, take up slightly a different level we've got Armagnac Armagnac is virtually an identical thing uh, again it can only be made in the region of Armagnac which is very close to Cognac again it's on the west sort of southwest area of France kind of just south of Bordeaux uh, very very similar in uh, in criteria and classification however the addition and I think I've got this right for Armagnac it has to be aged in oak casks there is some I don't know the ins and outs of it but there's some regulations about whether it's a specific age or a specific wood or a specific type of oak I'm not 100% sure on that but I know to be an Armagnac you can't so for instance you couldn't uh, you couldn't, even if you're in Armagnac, you couldn't make an Armagnac and not use a specific cask, all right? So it's kind of a similar with the whole grape thing. Uh, but then again, with the aging process, it's very, very kind of strict. So then the third level of brandies within France is obviously brandy. It's what I've, uh, what I've talked about. Now, um, so for instance, if you made brandy in uh, Normandy in the north of France, it's a brandy. Is there... Uh, it's kind of like champagne in that respect. Champagne, you know, people get very, very pretentious about champagne and it's the best there is. However, me personally, I'm a Carver fan. I love Carver. Uh, I prefer Carver to Prosecco. I prefer Carver to um, champagnes. And you can get some amazing uh, Carvers. So that's not to say you can't, get some amazing brandies that don't come from the cognac or armagnac region it's just very high because it's such a small market in the uk we just don't find them we just don't get them over here so they're the kind of three um kind of traditional french brandies however brandy is made all around the world we have got spanish uh, brandy for instance which comes from andalusia um in the region of spain again i i actually do really really like spanish brandy i think that's brilliant uh, as an excess it was your entry level uh, to cognac to, to and, see i've done it again slip of the tongue is your entry level to brandy i would highly recommend uh, checking out a spanish brandy first and foremost it's slightly sweeter by nature um it's obviously it's cheaper as well because they uh, employ a solera system so they go from barrel take a bit out of that barrel add it to this barrel etc 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 so it's just it's a cheaper process um for me the i because I was brought up on brandy, I can taste the difference. I have got that palate where I know a really good, for me, what I think is a really good brandy and what isn't. Um, but that's not to say I would not, brandy and Coke for me, uh, or brandy and ginger, I'm quite happy with a, um, a Spanish brandy. If I was going classic cocktails where I want those kind of notes to shine through, that's when I go VSOP. If I'm going neat, again, that's when I'm going VSOP. And don't forget, I'll come on to those classifications in a bit. But as an entry level, definitely recommend uh, checking out Spanish brandies. Now let's stay in Europe and talk about a brandy, a, a, a uh, Italian brandy as well. Uh, I guarantee it, a lot of you probably will have heard of it. Uh, it's not called brandy, it's called grappa. Grappa is Italian brandy, but for me, uh, I'm not a huge fan. Uh, and here's why. It, Italian brand, so with brandy, in a sense, it's just distilled and fermented from the grapes. With um, a grappa, it is distilled and fermented and distilled from everything in that process, the stalks, uh, the seeds, and the grape. For me, it becomes a lot harsher spirit. Uh, the Italians love it. Of course they do. They wouldn't make it if they didn't. Um, but I personally haven't got that palate for um, for grappa. The other thing that grappas traditionally don't do, they don't get aged. Okay. Uh, so they haven't got that smoothness that's come through oak aging or anything like that. They're kind of rough and ready. For me, if you're a rum fan, to class it more kind of like the whole Brazilian cachaça to um, 
to run. Kind of kind of unfairly, but I see Brazilian cachaça as the cheaper, harsher, rawer uh, kind of ingredient to run. Same thing, you know, the distilled from sugar cane, but it hasn't got that level of, of aging and smoothness to it. So that is grappa. Right, and then let's just finish off. Let's go around the world a bit. I don't know, I'll be honest, I don't know too much about the East. So we're going Australia, we're going China, Asia, all that area. I don't know about their brandies. I can't say as I've ever heard of one. I might have done uh, without thinking, but I can't say as I've ever heard too much about an Eastern uh, kind of brandy from us in the UK. However, if we go West, uh, we have got a couple of others. We've got uh, Pisco. Pisco is a brandy. Uh, Peru and Chile. Again, very similar in style to Italian Grappa. And I, th and I think I'm right in saying this. Uh, Pisco doesn't get distilled in the way Grappa would do with the whole uh, the skins and the, the, um, uh, the stalks and the seeds. I think it is very much grapes, but they use a different uh, variety of grapes. But the thing it has in common is, again, it's not aged. So Pisco will traditionally be a kind of colourless, uh, clear liquid. And for me, it hasn't got that smoothness and it is a little bit harsher. So there have been a couple of Piscos uh, that I like. I, I'm, if I think from memory, it's a Chilean Pisco that I've liked, not a Peruvian uh, one. Um, but again, they have different, it's like tequila in Mexico. They have different regions, will have different ways of distilling and blending. Um, so they've all got their own recipes. But for me, again, it doesn't, Pisco doesn't really come up to uh, the European style, and especially the French and the Spanish style. And then the final kind of region that I know about that distills brandy uh, is obviously the US. And obviously because uh, California is very well known for its wines, and I, I love some uh, Californian wines. I really do kind of really fruity. I just kind of love those sort of wines. So they obviously make cognac. They, uh, they make, there we go, another slip of the tongue. They obviously make brandy. Um, but they, again, they don't really come this way. Actually, the biggest brand, the biggest US brand of brandy that I actually know is actually kind of sort of a Calvados apple brandy. It's apple, it's Laird's Applejack, which is an apple brandy, or we would kind of call it uh, a Calvados if it was made in uh, Calvados region, France. Um, so we've got that. The other brand that I have heard of, I've never tried it, is Corbel with a K, uh, but Corbel are very well known to me as a sparkling wine producer. But again, I do know they produce and sell uh, a brandy around the US, but I cannot, uh, I don't know anything about it. I've never tasted it, but uh, I know that is one of the brands out there in the US. So that's kind of summed up uh, what brandy is around the world. Again, uh, I don't, for us in Europe, I don't think you need to go too far away from French. I would, you know, start, start off with if, you, if you've got a really sweet tooth, start off with a Spanish brandy, uh, but then if you can work up to a French brandy, uh, go from there, because you'll, you'll get much different um, a sort of a taste palette. But the kind of th other thing I wanted to uh, quickly chat, I said it at the top of the video, is Eau de, Fee, Eau de Vie, uh, the fruit brandies. Again, essentially brandy, anything distilled from fruit is essentially a brandy, but we can generally class um, the fruit brandy. So whether you're distilling apples, pears, peaches, cherries, apricots, what other brandies have we got here? Um, pff, loads, loads, whatever fruit brandies you've got, especially around the world. Uh, plum brandy is another one, Slivovitz. You know, that's uh, where, where uh, Eastern, I forget, where's Slivovitz come from? I forget the country now, but you've got the kind of those plum brandies. They're essentially the same thing, but they're just distilled from fruit and they traditionally have uh, quite a bit of sugar added to them to make them into liqueurs. Uh, as I say, I keep coming back to it, I've put it back. Bowles Cherry Brandy, yes, it's uh, brandy by nature, but it's not that. It is far removed from that or or Martell or anything like that. It's essentially cherries uh, distilled, made into a brandy, sugar added. And some of them will be, some Eau de Vies will be clear, uh, will be crystal clear in colour. Others, they will be um, added fruit juice added to them, added sugars, added colorings to them to make them there. The other one that's just literally come to the top of my head that I haven't even made notes of and I've just thought about it is obviously ouzo as well, uh, Greek ouzo. Ouzo, if I remember rightly, has uh, star anise in it as well. So it's kind of a fruit, it's an eau de vie, it's kind of a fruit brandy, but it's uh, it's got this whole uh, star anise thing going through it as well. So uh, that's kind of brandies 
in a sense. Uh, what I want to get onto now is talk about the age classifications to help you understand prices and why some are different and some aren't. Obviously, cognacs, uh, because of the stature, uh, and Armagnacs are going to be more expensive than brandy, um, but um, you have got these uh, other classifications that are kind of uh, just kind of bring the whole category, brandy category together. So the age classifications, uh, the first one to start off with, now I very rarely, I can't even recall seeing this in years, so the first one is an AC, um, and it basically means it's a two-year old uh, brandy, brandy it has been aged for two years, and I, I, as I say, I haven't seen one in donkey's years. Uh, the be where you'd have a normal brandy, so if you don't see anything on it, it's just a normal, young, rough and ready brandy. However, if you've got like letters on it, um, it kind of is, a will be a little bit more rounded, a little bit more smoother, and a little bit easier for you to drink. So the first one you will probably see is a VS. Uh, most supermarkets will carry a VS. The equivalent in, so VS would go naturally to Cognac, to Armagnac. The equivalent the brand that some brandies use is three stars. Uh, and again, there's um, uh, the French brandy, three uh, three, ba three barrels? Three stars. What's the brand? Three three barrels, I think it is. Uh, which is, again, it's a three, um, three star brandy, which means it's essentially been aged for three years. The next one we go up to, uh, which is what I've got there and is what I love, is the VSOP. Very so, so um, very special is the VS. Uh, the VSOP is not special, it's very superior old pale. Uh, and that what that basically translates to, and that's five stars. If you see a brandy with five stars, it's brandy's version of cognac classification there. Uh, again, it basically means it's been distilled, it's been aged for five years in barrels. Again, so you get this smoother. So you can understand from why me personally, it loves brandy, why I kind of love the VSOP. So you've got an extra few years of aging and all that kind of characters coming through in uh, from the barrels. And that's kind of why I love VSOPs. And the next one that I would actually go up to even though I think it would come in between, is a Napoleon. Uh, Napoleon, for my, what I've always classed as Napoleon, is a four-year-old uh, four year old brandy. Again, I don't think that's related to cognac, so I think it's more of a brandy thing. Um, but again, I very, there was a brand, I can't think who it was, maybe Martel did a Napoleon, or, or uh, Cavassier, I can't think who it was off the top of my head, uh, but did a Napoleon. But for me, I think Napoleon is uh, a four-year brandy. Uh, but for some reason it goes up, it's above, it's generally classified above a, a VSOP for some reason, I don't know why. As I say, uh, I'm not the oracle on brandies, I've just got a little bit of knowledge that I love. Uh, and then we go on to uh, kind of the X. So I think the thing with Napoleon, I think uh, if it's just sort of flashing back to me now, I think with Napoleon it's a minimum of four, eight, four years. I think that's it, whereas a VSOP is five years, I think the Napoleon would be a minimum of four years. So you could get like a five or six year Napoleon, something like that anyway. Um, but it, it doesn't matter too much because you won't see too many Napoleons. Uh, the one we go up to after that is the XO. Uh, the XO is not 10 years, and this is uh, classified as an XO. Uh, it's not a 10 year one, it's essentially six years. Um, that's what we class as an XO brandy, and I absolutely love XOs. Uh, Martell is my favourite XO. I'm uh, obviously in COVID times, I've normally got an XO here, whether it's Martell, whether it's Gavazier, whether it's Hennessy XO, I absolutely love. But I've got this little bad boy now, which I'm going to talk about a bit at the end of the video. Uh, but XOs, as I say, six years, a lot smoother, a lot more expensive. You could be in the UK, 80, well, anything from 60, but 70, 80, 90 pounds for an XO cognac. And uh, really, really lovely. And then you've got a couple of age above that. And again, we're talking expensive now. And excuse my French, but Hors de Age, however you say it, it's, <laughs> it's, quite, it's H O R S, Hors, and then it's D apostrophe H, Hors de, de Age, <laughs> however you say that in French. Basically, what that means is it's not an age statement. It just traditionally means it's too old to know. Uh, so whether you've got blends of brandies in there that are, 10 years old, 15 years old, a bit of 20 year old, uh, who knows, but that's horse de arche. I'm sorry, you, you get the idea. So that's kind of the, um, uh, the the classifications of brandy. Hopefully that's given you a little bit more. I'm gonna come on to, as I promised, um, come on to seven tales and why this 
has excited me a little bit. Um, but the brands, as, as, as I say, and this is why I wanted to leave this at the end, because I'm going to just give you a rough idea of brands now, just so you can learn. I've had to list them because I forget. We've got in brandy steaks, the big ones, I've got it listed there now, three barrels. Uh, three barrels is uh, a kind of probably biggest French brandy that you would see easily to get in most supermarkets. They'll carry that. Wholesalers, if you're in the trade, uh, you'll get three barrels quite easily. And I think three barrels is quite well renowned all, all around the world. It's probably the biggest French brandy. Um, We've got this, Seven Tails XO, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Um, this, again, is a brandy. And again, this is why this has excited me and what this is uh, in store for in the category. Uh, so we've got that. There aren't too many other brandy brands that I kind of know of. When we're talking about cognacs, I've already mentioned most of them. We've got Martel. We've got Cavazier. We've got Hennessy. We've got uh, Remy Martin, what am I missing, Hein or Heine, however you want to say it. Um, kind of a few, quite a few cognac, big famous cognac houses uh, from France there. And then uh, the big famous Spanish brandy is Torres, uh, T-O-R-R-E-S, Torres, is, that's a cracking, but you know, supermarket brands are not too bad. I remember having a uh, Tesco Spanish brandy, it's all right. Um, it's not too bad, to be fair, uh, but Torres is the big Spanish brandy. And then we've got um, the kind of Armagnacs uh, to kind of think of. Uh, the Lord, the Lord? The Lord uh, is, the bit, is one of the big ones, but Jano as well, uh, J-A-N-N-E-A-U uh, is another big Armagnac. So they're the two big Armagnacs you would probably see. Jano, I've seen quite a lot in the bigger supermarkets. Uh, the Lord is a lot harder to get. So they're kind of your brands. So... Um, kind of when you see three barrels, it's not a cognac, it's a brandy. When you see um, Martel, Cavazier, Remy Martin, they are cognacs because they come from a certain region in France and they are cognacs. Right, let's talk about Seven Tails and why uh, I've alluded to it at the start of the video, why I've got super excited, why I'm doing this brandy series. As I say, uh, I saw Emily Atak um, uh, talking about uh, basically promoting this, essentially promoting this, it's her friends, uh, but she kind of, I, I got super excited. From what I've talked about, you can kind of understand the air of pretentiousness around brandy. All right, you can kind of get uh, what um, you know why it's not that accessible. The reason I got super excited about this is because these guys, Seven Tails, are proud to be a brandy. I know I've not seen anyone. Uh, say that in recent times. People kind of want to be a cognac or they want to be an Armagnac. Uh, no one has come out and said they are proud to be a brandy. But here's why. This is a very, very different product. And uh, bear with me because I'll have to get this up on screen. Uh, but I'm going to tell you exactly how this is different. So I've just got the list up on screen because I need that list to kind of uh, tell you. There's no way I can remember that. But I'll just read you the back of the bottle for a start off. Uh, so bearing in mind, you know, it has to be a cognac, has to be certain grapes aged in a certain way in a certain region. Uh, and it, all this, this is where Seven Tails is trying to break this down, trying to become a more accessible and more fun uh, product. And this is kind of what I want to do. I'm going to do these videos, these four videos, but over the next, especially 2021, I want to kind of try and do my little bit to really shout about brandy and cognacs um, because I absolutely love it. I, it makes an amazing drink. It really, really does. So I'm gonna be featuring this brand quite a lot. They're not paying me to do this at all. I just love the taste and I love what they stand for. So let me read you the back of the bottle for this. Uh, Seven Tails XO Brandy. So XO. Uh, inspired by the art of alchemy, we defy convention following our own path to create the extraordinary. So they're defying the rules, okay? The rules that state what a cognac can be, what an armagnac can be. Uh, and that is why they're proud to be a brandy because it still can legally be a brandy. Of course it can, it just can't be anything else. So they're defying convention. Uh, convention. The inception of Seven Tails XO is a unique cognac Armagnac and the finest French brandies that are aged in oak barrels but finished in port wood casks. Can't be done. It cannot be done with cognacs. Cannot be done with Armagnacs. It only can be a certain oak. Uh, you cannot do, you cannot use port, sherry, whiskey, whatever. You can't do it. Um, Martel did a uh, kind of a, a brandy last it was early, it might have been earlier this year, 20, 2020, 
uh, or 20, it might have been 2019, but they essentially did uh, their cognac aged in uh, whiskey casks. But they essentially did a barrel swap, um, but it wasn't allowed to be called a brandy, and it was it was an eau de vie. It wasn't allowed to be called anything. Uh, it wasn't allowed to be called a cognac. So. As I say, uh, it's a blend of cognac, armagnac, and the finest French brandies aged in oak barrels and finished in port wood casks to achieve the rich uh, depth of flavour, encompassing tasting notes of praline, dried fig, and toasted vanilla. And that's when my little eyes light up, lit up on uh, this Instagram, um, their Instagram page. I was just like, oh my God, I need a bottle. I ordered a bottle. It came the next day. It came literally uh, 13 hours later. Uh, and I tasted it and it's absolutely amazing. So here's the brandies um, that go into this. I'm going to read these out. Um, so obviously Seven Tails. Why is it called Seven Tails? Because we've We've got seven. <laughs> We've got seven that go into this. We've got a French brandy that's aged three years. We've got an Armagnac from a ten. I'm not even going to pronounce that, but ten 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 uh, We've got a four-year-old Armagnac in here. We've got a twenty-year-old Armagnac in here. We've got a thirty-year-old Armagnac in here. We've got a ten-year-old, uh, an eight-year-old cognac, and a ten-year-old cognac blended together. Uh, to create this absolute beast of a brandy, 41.8% ABV, uh, 82.6 proof, and oh my God, it tastes amazing. So I know this has been a long video. Um, thank you if you're still watching. Thank you for bearing with me. Uh, coming up on screen now will be the next videos. As, as I say, I'm going to be doing the classic uh, brandy cocktails. I'm going to be doing brandy flips using cognac instead of maybe a rum or a vodka instead of that. And then in the fourth video in this series, I'm going to be doing my uh, kind of fun twists to help you enjoy that. So let me know what you think. Uh, as I say, appreciate it. If you're still watching, thank you so much. I will see you in the very next video.